Hey, I'm Sydney Payne. I'm Carter Shope. I'm Chloe Henderson. And welcome back to Behind the Scenes with GHS head football coach Paul Standard. From the game against East Jackson uh, two weeks ago, we interviewed Kobe Stonestopper last week, and he said after the first drive, whenever they scored, that he turned to Seth and they talked and they, they knew they had the game from then on. Is there a point whenever you thought in that game that y'all just had it? Well, I felt like in the second half, when we went up two scores, that we were starting to take control of the game um, by taking control of the line of scrimmage. And uh, obviously, they, uh, being a, a pretty good football team, were able to uh, you know, come down and score and hold us and score to go ahead. But I never really, uh, quite honestly, I never was worried because we had been able to move the football throughout the game. Um, I was very proud of how our guys responded when we got down late in the game and was able to execute the plays to get us down the field. Obviously, Kobe, um, well, everybody had a big hand in it, but Kobe made some great plays, uh, as well as did Dom Tarantino. Um, you know, in the offensive line, I mean, it was a total group effort. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to know that Seth and, and Kobe, who are two of our big leaders felt like we were okay even after we uh, were behind early in the game. That's good to know. Were there any players that you like saw step up for the game that like first varsity start were younger that made a big impact for the game? Absolutely. I, you know, we started a freshman. We have been starting a freshman guard, uh, Blaine Banks, who actually had a great block in the last drive um, when we ran the reverse. Then we got sacked, and then we ran a little toss play. We call that play missile, but we tossed it to Kobe, and Blaine out on the perimeter knocked down their, their really good running back who was also their safety, who was number two. Um, so Blaine had a, had a huge night. We started a sophomore, Nolan Price, who's not played a lot of varsity football, and he's done really well for us. Um, we've got two sophomore linebackers, uh, Alex Sampson and uh, Aspen Hathaway, who've done a great job. So yeah, our guys, um, though we're not very experienced overall, um, those guys really stepped up, so I was real proud of them. Uh, for the next game against Cherokee Bluff, with the team being about twice the size of players against East Jackson, is there, have y'all been working on conditioning more, having to stay in the game, with Cherokee Bluff being able to substitute a few players out? Well, you know, the way we practice every day is that our guys are always on the move. So we didn't, um, we don't do a lot of conditioning because the way we practice and the length of practice time that we that we have. Um, so we feel like our kids are getting in game shape by the way they practice. But we certainly have uh, got a, you know a big task ahead of us. Cherokee Bluffs probably the cream of our region, cream of the crop. But uh, we certainly feel like we're ready. Uh, and are about to finish up our preparation. Uh, what have you noticed for like Cherokee Bluffers, East Jackson, we like film, past experiences with them? Is one more physical, one more like just what? Right. The difference well, Cherokee Bluff, like East Jackson, is a mainly running football team. Now, they do throw it some. Their head coach uh, actually coached uh, with me many, 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 many years ago. His very first year of coaching was on the staff that I was a coach on, so I've known him for a long time. He does a great job. They've got a great running back um, who they'll hand the ball to 25 times, you know, maybe even 30 times a game. So we've concentrated on obviously stop trying to slow him down, but we've also got to be a little bit more conscious of pass this week than we were. East Jackson didn't throw the ball, even though they scored twice on us throwing it, they had not come into the game being much of a passing threat. So your main focus this week is just shutting down the run and then going Yeah, the I, slowing down the run and being able to uh, not give up any big pass plays um, right. on defense. Uh, coming off of bye week, do you think the extra rest will benefit the team or the cause of mo uh, momentum will be like a loss? You know, I think the way we handled um, the open week, we practiced on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then, uh, and we still took some time to concentrate with the JV. 
Then on Wednesday, all we did was practice the JV. I let the varsity guys have a little time off. Um, and they were off actually Thursday. And we worked the JV, which I thought was very important um, to spend some time with those guys. And they had a big win over Fannin uh, that week. And so we were excited about that. Um, what I've seen over my 37 years is that uh, I want our players to still want to be playing football late November. So we don't want to burn them out. So we give them a little bit of time off because that was our last open week. From here on out, it's you know football every day. So um, I think it, it really served its purpose. Uh, this year's team's offensive like concept has been the triple option. Uh, last year's just like basic like wing T. Is there any reason you prefer this offensive style? Like what drew you to pick this style? You know, um, well obviously I've been running this type of offense for over well over 20 years. 20 years as a head coach. And at St. Pius, and um, when I was the offensive coordinator at Decula, we were an option-based offense. Um, why, why I like this type of a offensive attack is that, number one, you don't have to have really big linemen. It's nice to have them, and we've got a few, but you don't have to have big linemen uh, to execute this offense. It is an offense that is um, suited for the type of young men that we have here. They're disciplined. Um, they're unselfish. We don't have a feature running back, if you will, in the triple option offense, even though Kobe Stonecipher's had some big nights for us, and that's been great. There's going to be a night where, in the, in the fullback, Brock Titus <clears throat> has had a big night for us. But there's going to be a night where the quarterback's going to run it or a night with the other running back, uh, well, the, the wing back, well, he might be the main ball carrier. It just depends on what the defense allows us to do. Um, but it lends itself to our type of uh, kids that we have here at Gilmer. It certainly was what we had at St. Pius, and it's hard for teams to defend because they don't see it anymore. They don't right? know it. Yeah, they just, they just don't practice it. When I was a young coach, everybody ran the option. So it was kind of common. As time has gone on, uh, less and less people do that. And so I think that also gives us an advantage. And that'll do it for this week's Behind the Scene with Coach Standard. Join us next week for our Senior Spotlight with quarterback Seth Darling.